What's up guys, welcome back. I'm Ryan from Lion Bold. I'm here again with Steve Leslie, Grammy Award winning songwriter. And today what we're gonna do is something that I have no clue how to do. So that's why I have Steve the expert here. Uh, we're gonna take a song title and we're gonna flesh it out into all of the ideas for a potential song. And Steve is, um, you know, has a 30 year songwriting career. He's written hundreds and hundreds of songs and there's no one better to walk us through his process. So thank you, Steve, for being here. What do you do to uh, take a song title and flesh it out into a full song eventually? Like, what's the process? Like, how do you start? Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Good to see you, Ryan. A nice <laughs> shirt, by the way. We're wearing the same. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you notice we have the same shirt on, basically? It's a requirement. Like, if you're going to write what? with someone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these are actually for sale on my website, these shirts. These no, I'm kidding. Heathered gray, no logos. <laughs> Amazing. That it's, it's like, I think it's the same shirt. Anyway, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, well, yeah, let me first say, um, you know, in Nashville, um, I don't know about anywhere else, but in Nashville, when you're writing every day mm -hmm. as a professional songwriter, now you don't have to be a professional songwriter to write every day. But one of the requirements of being a professional songwriter is that one does write every day. Um, and usually because you're getting paid to do it, which always helps. And there's a little bit of that work ethic um, involved when you're not doing it. Um, I asked a buddy of mine when I first got signed to my very first publishing deal in Nashville at EMI Music Publishing. My, I asked a friend, I said, how do you how do you do this? I mean, do you? Do you write every day? Is there a time clock? You know, what, do you have a time card? I mean, how do you, you know, because they pretty much let you, especially in the big publishing companies like EMI at the time, they just said, okay, here, you know, here's a little bit of money. You can quit retail. <laughs> and uh, now you have basically two years to make something happen or we're going to let you go. Yeah. Now, they don't say that, but that's kind of what you hear. Uh, especially in a big company, they're not maybe going to help you as much individually, you know, personally. It's like, okay, here's, you can, you can write here, you can go to the parties, you can say you're from EMI, uh, you're, you're now have access to uh, a Rolodex that you couldn't before, and the publishers will now take your meetings, and you can go to all the cool parties and see all the cool kids, but we're probably not going to help you get your songs cut. So go mm -hmm. get them cut yourself and uh, meet the right people, and uh, if you don't do that in two years, we're going to find somebody who can't. Hmm. That's kind of the unspoken deal, which wow. you know what? It's a really good deal because now you don't have to schlep retail or you know. Um, so so once you and again, this guy told me. I said, "Well, how do you do this? How do you become a? I mean, what do you do?" And he said, "He put. He said I treat it just like a real job. I get a calendar at the end of the year. I mean, a full year calendar, and I write in uh, a vacation uh, two or three times a year. I'll take." you know, a couple weeks off or three weeks off a year. And I'll write those in my calendar and I'll just write every single day. Like I'm working at the factory and I work for that vacation. And then I just take a vacation. I keep it that same work ethic that yeah. I did in the real world. And I thought, well, that's a, that's a good idea. So that's kind of how I've, I've done it. So professional songwriter writes every single day. Um, in Nashville, you don't really write by yourself anymore. It's a kind of a, kind of a funny thing with, mm -hmm. with co-writing, which is what we're talking about here. We're talking about writing from the title again with a co-writer. Mm. Now you can certainly do it by yourself and take these things that we're talking about and use them on your own. But there's something about that back and forth with a, uh, another songwriter or two, um, that can really uh, uncover things, um, not only writing from the title, but any other way that maybe you couldn't by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, most of my experience as a professional writer has been co-writing mm -hmm. um, because once you hit Nashville, everybody comes to Nashville and writes uh, songs by themselves. You know, that's how you get your deal. And then when you get your deal based on the songs that you wrote by yourself, then they put you in with other writers, um, A, to uh, maybe get more work done. B, to establish relationships because the guy you're writing with or the girl you're writing with may be an artist one day mm -hmm. or a record label head. So, you know, nobody writes in a vacuum. And also split the demo costs. Mm. If I'm writing with another, if I'm writing with you and you're writing for Sony and I'm writing for EMI and we, we deem that the song is worthy of a demo, then you're paying $400 and I'm paying $400. That comes out of your pocket? Well, it's uh, that's another that's another music business thing that we can talk about in, in, a, in a subsequent 
you know, yeah. a discussion. But mm -hmm. uh, that's that's something you don't pay for. But it goes half of that. Usually, half of your demo cost usually goes against royalties that you make. Mm, that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot we can talk another thing about mm -hmm. another time about publishing and songwriting royalties and contracts and all that stuff. Is there's some boilerplate stuff that people I think would want to know about. But um, uh, so I, I'm backing up a little bit, but just, you know, writing from a title as a co-writer um, is something that um, that you end up doing a whole lot, because if you're writing every single day, you can't wait for inspiration. Mm. You know, when you're 15, you know, you're, you're writing because, you know, because Becky left <laughs> or, uh, you know, or, or whatever it is. And, uh, um, you know. You know, Yates said we're all poets when we're, when we're, you know, 15. If you're a poet at 25, then you might be a real poet, <laughs> you know. Um, so songwriting, uh, you know, you have to kind of always keep your eyes open for potential titles and ideas. And again, titles and ideas can be two different things. An hmm. idea for a song might be, hey, I got this idea about maybe a guy who goes into, a, you know, um, who lost his child um, in a terrible accident. And now he's dealing with blah, blah, blah. That's more of an idea. Yeah. You know, how, or, hey, let's write an idea about how uh, people in America seem to be, you know, in different camps and and what we can do to bring each other together. That's not a title. That's an idea. And you can mm -hmm. write from that and maybe a title will come from that idea. Mm -hmm. um, and so ideas go into hook books, which we call them that. And uh, titles go into hook books. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the hook book. Hook book. There you go. Yeah, hook book, hook book. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is. Um, and uh, then, um, and these titles, these ideas. Let's talk about titles. I think we know the difference now. But titles can come from anywhere. And, and when I first moved to town, and I realized that we needed to write every day, and I just wasn't, you know, um, um, going to be inspired by life events every day mm -hmm. to write something down. Um, and I realized that people were writing from hook books with titles and ideas written in there. I thought to myself, well, how, how can I sort of jumpstart this? And one of the things that I did, which was one of the most uh, helpful things that I ever did that I recommend everybody do, uh, even, if, even if you've been writing for a long time, is to get a uh, word um, slang dictionary, go mm -hmm. online, slang words, Americanisms, common phrases. Right. And there are song titles just waiting on every page. It's mm. so exciting. You just, you know, and, you know, just sort of graze through them. You know, there you go again. Drive me crazy. Don't let me go. Give me something to go on. Hmm. Those yeah. are just uh, phrases, you know, that we, that we, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. Ooh, what a great idea for a song somewhere in that neighborhood. You know what yeah. I mean? They're just waiting for you. And then I just wrote them down in my hook book. And I, if something hit me as to how to maybe treat that, somewhere in that neighborhood, guy goes back to hometown after years apart and to uh, to uh, rediscover the that that youth that he was mm. and try to find himself somewhere in that neighborhood. Right. Yeah. The elevator pitch. Because usually when you when you have a when you see a title, that very first thought can be very, very important. Mm -hmm. So write it down, write that initial thought. And there's no initial thought, but it seems like it's like, boy, that sounds like something I could work on. Mm -hmm. Give me something to go on. That's a great phrase. Give me something to go on. I mean, it's in that book. It's in that phrase. It's on, you know, online. I write it down. If nothing hits you, don't worry about it. Go on to the next thing. And, you know, I compiled hundreds mm -hmm of those things and then either um, took that into a co-write and had some things already fleshed out somewhere in that mm -hmm. neighborhood. There's a kid that goes back to hometown, blah, blah, blah. Or I would sit by myself and work on those titles and flesh them out ahead of time so that when I show up to a co-write, man, I'm armed with, you know, 30 or 40 possible ideas. And so is he or she. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so you yes. bring those ideas together and... So that there's like a, a jump start in the beginning because you don't want to be Absolutely. sitting there like just like, well, what do we? <laughs> yeah. Once you get through the, hey, you know, especially if you if a co-writes the first time you meet them, you know, there's mm -hmm. that, you know, there's that there's some time to, hey, where are you from? You know, yeah. you want some coffee and you go get the coffee and you talk about it. And then eventually 
um, you get the round to saying, so what do you feel like writing today? Uh-huh. And it's also, you start at 10 and you end about, you know, two or four. Wow. I mean, it's, and it's a job. And uh, mm. some people would think that that takes the magic and the inspiration out of creativity when it's like a job. You know, I've heard it said, yeah, can you believe these guys in Nashville? They go in rooms every day and they write from like 10 to four every day, like a job. Oh my God, how <laughs> boring is, I mean, what kind of inspiration? Well, that is where the inspiration comes from. Hmm. The inspiration comes from sitting down and having a reason to do it. Because if yeah. I'm here by at the house writing by myself, I'm checking on the laundry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing other. It's hard to focus. It's a dedicated time and space. Yeah. 10 o'clock in mm-hmm. a different place. You leave out of here. You take your lunch. Mm-hmm. It's a job. And there's something about that. It doesn't take any of the mystery out of it. It's the best job in the world. But there's something about that structure that says, hey, we're inviting the muse in, mm-hmm. you know, uh, it's important enough to, to treat as a not, a, you know, a job with a small J. But so you're in the room with your with your um, book full of hooks, your hook book full of either ideas or mostly uh, song titles and, you know, slang dictionaries, word origin, di- those kinds of things. Those, those things I would definitely encourage everybody to do. And I still do that. Mm-hmm. But that's not the only place. Obviously, our ears are, you know, Jimmy Webb said our office is between our ears. Mm-hmm. And so as songwriters, we're always listening to conversations. You know, it's almost like another person overhearing and overseeing what we're doing, whether we're watching a movie or reading a book or having a conversation, yeah. passing a, a marquee sign or a bumper sticker, something is always going, ooh, that's, that would be a neat idea for a song. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And either now you record it when you're driving into your phone or you write it down or you record it when whatever. But, yeah. you know, I've, le- I've left many a party for five minutes when someone I'm having a conversation with someone, they go, yeah, you know, it's, um, that gives me something to go on. And I'm like, I'll be right back <laughs> and I'll disappear in the bathroom. And if that's, if Just he's a songwriter, song. she's a songwriter, they're going into the other bathroom. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, I'll be right back. And then you go, okay. Okay. Something to go on. Okay. This guy comes into a bar, whatever. Yeah. And so you're always getting, you're that always, and that, that ends, you know, yeah. I think for me that needs to end up in a, uh, in an organized, uh, thing mm-hmm. or you're, I'm not the guy that says, where's that idea for that song I had? Oh, see, where's the, <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm very organized, almost mm-hmm. to a fault, as you can tell by the bookshelf behind me. Um, <laughs> At least but it's, it's not really color-coded. Helped me. Huh? At least it's not color-coded. <laughs> yeah. For all my blue books and my red books. Oh, yeah, no. Well, yeah, not yet. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I, th- I think that's, or having those organizational uh, skills or habits is a, is a really good thing. Yeah. You know, fastidiousness in, in, in your work can be a good thing, I think. Um, at least... You know, you show up and you don't want to waste anybody's time. And that's another great thing about co-writing that makes you focus. Uh, They're there and you're there. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, time is important and they're there to do a thing. And once you get through the niceties of how's your mom and you want some more coffee, then you sit down. And usually it's like, so what do you want to write today? And uh, you can go one of several ways. Uh, Nowadays, some guys, sometimes there's a track that gets it started. Sometimes somebody brings in. Uh, instead of working on the lyric side, they're working on the track side. And they might have this cool kind of groove thing, chorus, versy deal. And if and then, you know, I'm still looking through the hook book going, oh, this idea fits that. Mm-hmm. Especially right here where the where the title needs to be you know, yeah. in the music. And I say, oh, that might work. And then now we're, we've got some place to start. Mm-hmm. Or uh, if, if, if the music isn't happening, then um, you're looking across the... Uh, the room at your co-writer and you're kind of going so i uh, i saw this movie the other day and this um this uh, person said you know somewhere in that neighborhood uh, but you know uh, and i thought oh that's a nice that's a nice little phrase uh, so i wrote that down and and the, your co-writer might go uh, oh somewhere in that neighborhood i like that and either the question might be posed so what do you think that's about which is like you know what kind of cereal do you want to buy? <laughs> you can go anywhere with that. Yeah. I'm like, it's too big. It's mm-hmm. too much. You know, mm-hmm. it's a, you're standing at the cereal aisle. Um, I don't know. Or potato chips. Oh boy. You know, you're looking, oh, I don't know. I'll just leave, you know? Um, um and so you, you, you learn pretty quick that, uh, that is not probably the, the best way to, to go about it. Mm-hmm. And one of the 
one of the lessons that I uh, learned from just being in the room with with pro songwriters who had been doing this longer than I had at the time was watching them go through a process. And just about everybody went through the same process. And it's a process that I go into great detail on the video lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you know how you know the narrative element of songwriting that's on song assembly song assembly dot co yeah, that's right um, check it out <laughs> get a free shirt that's Not right really. this exact shirt <laughs> so and that's um um and we won't get too much into this because that's a whole another thing a whole another lesson I think more into the maybe the craft we are kind of trying to focus on the, the song title although. Maybe this is the time to sort of introduce it, but somewhere in that neighborhood, for instance, or with the the, the, the the example I use on the in the class is uh, lonely stuff. Mm, yeah, remember that. Um, well, let's talk about lonely stuff. Mm -hmm. Let's just keep, just use that as an example, and then mm -hmm. people can folks can go to the lesson if they want to, and and really dive deep, way deep into that thing. But. Um, for instance, this this actually happened. A co-writer brought in this idea. He said, "Man, I, I was watching a movie the other night." And, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> okay. I was watching a movie the other night. Let me turn that off. It's producers, new yeah. songs, yeah, uh, superstars. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Hello, Garth. I can't talk to you, Bert. Now I'm on a video. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it was Garth yeah. Williamson. He's my. He lives. No. <laughs> um, so uh, this, my buddy said, man, I was watching this movie the other night, and uh, and uh, I'm, I'm watching it, and somebody didn't really say this, but I'm thinking to myself, gosh, that's lonely stuff, man. That is lonely stuff. Hmm. Whatever it was, whatever he was watching made him go, man, that's lonely stuff. And he went, oh, lonely stuff. Wrote it down, came in, said, man, I got this idea. I don't know lonely stuff. And like everybody I know pretty much would do, sitting across from me they're not going what is this about it's what rhymes with stuff mm. it's a totally different approach than what it's, we're probably it's naturally going to do because why i mean we've gotten rid of 30 steps why because that is a hard rhyme i mean not a hard rhyme meaning hard that's a really rhyming word at the end of that song title that will probably end up rhyming probably perfect rhyming for the most part mm -hmm. in your song mm-hmm and it could just stand out there by itself and not rhyme with anything. Yeah, but more than likely, lonely stuff is going to rhyme. Usually yeah. titles rhyme, don't they? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usually, especially when it's something that, that uh, intense stuff. Boy, that made me go, ooh, that's going to rhyme, man. So it's not what is this about. It's what rhymes with stuff. And if I'm sitting across from a seasoned writer, it's amazing to watch them because that's exactly what they're doing. They're going through the same process. I'll say, like, let's say I threw that idea out, too another pro writer Stephen Dale Jones sitting across from me he's uh, man I got this idea called lonely stuff lonely stuff he's not going to ask me what is this about he's doing this stuff rough enough rough stuff I can see it in his lips he's going stop rough tough because uh -huh. he knows first of all that's a very rhymable title yeah. and and it's not what this is about um, the, the line will the, the rhyme will give you the line hmm Rhyme will give you the line. So if he's thinking, stuff, lonely stuff, rough, rough, she's had it rough, and that's lonely stuff. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's had it rough. See, the line, the rhyme gave you the line. Yeah. She's she's had it rough, and that's lonely stuff, man. And then it, and I'm over there doing the same thing in my lips, rough, tough. And at some point you go, wait a minute, this is prop. This has enough legs. There's enough here, A, enough rhyming words, mm -hmm. you no know, perfect rhyme or near rhyme, mm -hmm. rough, tough, enough, mm. that there's something here, let's jump in because it's going to be worth the next hundred hours of our life. <laughs> yeah. It's, with writing it, rewriting it, and is it worth $400 each of our own money? So you're really yeah. qualifying. Mm. And professionally, you're really qualifying the title based on the time spent. Is there something here, and is it worth paying for? Totally. So, I mean, yeah. That's, yeah. that's a pretty amazing step to go through. But again, it really, it really focuses you. Yeah. Um, like, is the song going to be like pulling teeth, and it's going to just be a waste of life, or is there actually going to be some? Yeah, and I got to tell you, it probably 
that sort of feeling the future mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. really probably comes from experience, experience, experience. Yeah. And I'm sure I've missed a bunch of titles hmm. that I said, mm, I don't know, maybe not. Let's look at something else and missed an opportunity that somebody else wrote. Well, was it my day to write it? Let's let somebody else write it. You know? Right. Um, but yeah, you kind of go through that process, you know, it's like, and also who would cut it again, I'm getting a little bit away from the craft and more on the business side and Mm -hmm. the qualification side of time spent as a professional writer, you know, and you won't you don't have to be a professional writer writing with other people in mind, writing for radio, whatever, to go through these limitations because I do them anyway, if I'm writing for myself, Mm Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a, you know, minus a couple questions like who would cut it if I'm going to be doing it. Well, okay. But questions like, oh, I don't need another ballad, you know. Mm-hmm. And there are some professional considerations when writing titles uh, and writing kinds of songs going, yeah, I don't, yeah, the artist usually will bring in the ballad. Uh, Up tempo is certainly more pitchable these days right, than yeah. ballads. Mm-hmm. Or mid tempo groove, okay, yeah, but you kind of you you know negative. What about up tempo positive love song? Ah, and that's what sells. That's what people want to listen to, right? That's what people want to listen to. Mm-hmm. And is that a bad thing to write with that sort of limitation? Does that sound uh, you know too crass and too unartistic? For me, it's just another limitation that gets work done. Mm. It's just another limitation to get work done. To me, that's a joy because it focuses me and I'm all of a sudden doing it. And the hardest thing is to start. Hmm. The hardest thing in the world is this. <laughs> that's the loneliest place in the world. Oh, is that the laundry? I think the dogs need fed. Yeah. You know, I'm doing something else. So any sort of limitation like that really gets me focused. Now, if it's a if it's lonely stuff, definitely doesn't sound like an up-tempo positive song, but it was worth it writing and we both de- decided that it was worth writing because there was something to it yeah. there was something that was calling us and those rhymes were killer we knew there was enough rhymes to make it work and it was just a matter of of uh, spending the time and um working to make those rhymes connected into a narrative and that's a that's a different thing that we'll talk about and it goes into great detail on those courses on song assembly but Mm-hmm. Um, but to keep it more specific here, write, writing titles is kind of what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. And again, write them in your hookbook. Write the rhyming words that come to you as well. Not okay. only the yeah. elevator pitch. This is a song about a guy who goes back to his hometown and discovers the child that he once was somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Good. Would. Yeah. Uh, should. You know, write the rhyming words, and usually they're perfect rhymes that I hear first. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with perfect rhyme, especially on the title. Yeah. Especially when you're nailing the title. Man, there's nothing better than nailing the title with a perfect rhyme, you know, especially the first time or two. You can get away from that later on once you establish that title with with a perfect rhyme. And then you can maybe get away from that and go, could, uh, cup. You know, pour me another cup of that lonely stuff. So yeah, total slant there, but can you still can sort of, yeah. you can you can do that because at the beginning we had uh, um, uh, rough enough mm-hmm. stuff. Boom, boom, boom. You got it in the person. You got it in the listener's ear. You're okay. Yeah. Um, but I write down titles all the time and. Mm-hmm. You go through that process. I do it when I'm not with a co-writer, but you kind of go through that process. It's another limitation that's built into getting work done in a limited amount of time, and I'm a big fan of it. You know, either that, because yeah. if not, we're walking around and we're, you know, make, getting another cup of coffee. But yeah. you can get you can get some great work done that, that way. Um, again, I'm looking across at the co-writer, and he's going stuff rough. Tough. Cool. There might be something here, and again, the rhyme gives you the line. Yeah. And then it's now, now it's just a matter of taking those couplets. Mm-hmm. Guess she's had enough of that lonely stuff. Pour mm-hmm. me another cup of that lonely stuff. Mm-hmm. That couplet, you get, you get two or three of those in your mind or written down. Now it's just, yeah. you put those on the page. Now you're just c- connecting the couplets and forming mm-hmm. a narrative. Yeah, the story starts to form there. Yeah, and then you don't even have to worry about what is this song about because it's already about something. 
Yeah, because the yeah, and the song will tell you what it's about in the yeah. process, organically, as yeah, opposed to mechanically. Cool. It's it's an organic yeah. process. It's telling you it's it's telling you what it's uh, wanting to be because you're you know you're you're fleshing it out right there. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Instead of starting at the very beginning of the of the song and going okay, uh, oh, 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 writing to the end, it's like no man, you write like a chess player. You know, you, you look at you, like it's a craft. Uh -huh. You're moving it around. You know, when somebody's making a saddle, mm -hmm. you know, or, or carving a table, you don't start at this end and go, you know, <laughs> you do this. And I don't know anything about carving tables, but I imagine you do this and you you know flip it over here and you you carve here and you okay move it here. You know, jam over here until it kind of forms itself. You know, yeah. same way with songwriting. You know, ooh, lonely stuff. Uh, put it there, put it there, put it there, put it there. Oh, what if we put, oh, yeah. Oh, boom, 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 bam. Yeah. Based on the rhyming words that gave you the line mm -hmm. that then you thought of a payoff line, guess she'd had enough of that lonely stuff. That's awesome. Pour me another cup of that lonely stuff. Yeah. Then, then you start. Then the thing starts being revealed to you, and you have different signposts. You have different ways to connect stuff. That's how it looks on the page, and mm -hmm. uh, or on the screen, how, however you want to write. But um, yeah, one of the uh, writing from titles. Uh, I'll, I'll say this: um, one of the you know the thing about going to the slang dictionary and or, you know keeping your ears open for titles. That's certainly uh, very productive work. One of the things, I, the kind of titles that I love to to uh, really write and, and, and ideas that gravitate uh, that I really gravitate toward and it's more maybe in the in the domain of country songwriting I don't know and it kind of comes in and out of favor it kind of becomes cool and it's not mm. cool uh, but I've heard them in pop music I've heard it every everywhere it's not just country but titles of ambiguity mm. titles that have mm. ambiguous meanings meaning meaning you know the word ambiguity doesn't the, the first definition in Webster's is uh, uh, not clear. Yeah. You know, that's ambiguous. I'm not sure. He's ambiguous, but that's not just the. That's not. That's not the only definition. The second definition is around, amb to amble, hmm. from the Latin word amb to amble to just kind of walk around. You know, yeah. ambulance drives around. Uh, amphitheater was derived from amb, amb, hmm. amb. Round, so it's basically seeing the same thing from different perspectives. Interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. So something that's ambiguous has more than one meaning. Mm -hmm. You can infer more than one meaning. So depending on how you look at it, it can mean something different. Yeah, that's how I like. That's how I like to think about ambiguity and titles of mm -hmm. ambiguity, like how good night used to be. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a that's an ambiguous title. A, it tells me two things, and I always look, this is so important, I look on the figurative side and the literal side, because this is figurative language. Ambiguous titles, ambiguous lines, word phrases are under the domain of figurative language. And so look at the figurative side, which is how it came to, me, how it came to be used in English, for instance, how, um, how good not you... Um, 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 uh, somewhere in that neighborhood. Let's let's use yeah, that. Yeah. Let's use that. Somewhere in that neighborhood. There, I've got three titles going on here. Let's let's concentrate on somewhere in that neighborhood. Good, should, would. Uh, write them down. Right. Good. Um, somewhere in that neighborhood. Well, that is a, an ambiguous title because it can be looked at at least two ways. One, the literal side. Somewhere in that neighborhood. That real neighborhood. Mm hmm. You know, yeah. Where, yeah. where'd you lose your wallet? Oh, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, the one over there next to the other neighborhood. So it's a real place somewhere in that neighborhood. Now, the figurative side is the more common, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. How much do you pay for that car? Like a thousand? Eh, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are you, 50 years old or so? Eh, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood, which means, you know, somewhere. So that's the figurative side, figurative mm -hmm. language. Yeah. And, but the literal side, which is not, you know, not often used, but as a writer, looking at that two sides, mm -hmm. I think somewhere in an actual neighborhood. So if I have a title that I can use two meanings, man, I've got all kinds of cool stuff that I can do that yeah. with. And it's that kind and of we, wordsmithing that makes the song you know, crafted instead of just like an accident or, 
Well, that's well put. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You, yeah. And now it becomes, you know, n- now the job is solving the song. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're not writing it. You're solving it. How can I make this work, man? You know, and you got the perfect rhymes or the rhyming mm-hmm. words in your head. And you've also got two sides of a meaning somewhere in that neighborhood, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood mm-hmm. and somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. And so, wow, now, now you, you know, and that's a whole nother skill set we can, we can talk about that I've gotten pretty good at just from doing it so much. And it's really a magic trick. Like, wow, you know, cause you're the first time you hear the chorus, it's, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood, mm-hmm. you know, I've been back here about six or eight. I think it's been about 10 or 12 years ago since I've been back here or somewhere in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. You know? yeah. And then, you know, I, I used, you know, there's, there, there was an old oak tree that I remember that was next to a house somewhere in that neighborhood, mm-hmm. the, the literal. So you have both working. Okay. Mm-hmm. It really sparked some, some cool things with the rhymes going and everything. And I gave this title, I give this title to everybody. I say, write it, you know, mm-hmm. write it, everybody write it. Um, and, um, boy, I gave this. Uh, title to a, a class at Belmont one year, and Emily Wise Band, who's now a Grammy-winning songwriter and a soon-to-be pop star, uh, was in my class, and and uh, everybody was ta- they were not singing, but they were reading the lyric that they worked on that week, and somewhere in that neighborhood, using both sides of the meaning, the ambiguous there and perfect rhymes and near rhymes and all that stuff. Work went through this exercise, and. Everybody kind of had the same idea going somewhere in that neighborhood. I'll find the child that I once was and regain that youthful spirit. And, you know, and they were everybody was kind of dry, pretty much, you know, driving down the same road that they used to drive down and go, oh, there's the there's the pharmacy that I remember that when I was a kid, I used to get an ice cream there, you know, and oh, oh, you know, I'm looking for the high school that used to be somewhere in that neighborhood. But it's not there anymore because they put up a apartment building, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. So it's rediscovering youth, you know, and you're looking for that kid you once were somewhere in that neighborhood, you know. And they're all kind of driving down the road, taking you on this <laughs> ambiguous journey. Had some great examples. And then Emily Wiseband and all her genius blew us all away. <laughs> Did I tell you this? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't it's remember so, it, though. I want to hear it again. It's so good. I just blew my mind and she basically said the same thing she's driving down and she's seen them blah, blah 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 and at the very end of the song where it belongs the payoff the one that just goes boom and makes you want to hear it again and she said something like this i'll paraphrase something like and there's that oak tree that i remember and bobby laid a blanket down on the ground and lord it felt so good it wasn't love but it was somewhere in that neighborhood <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh man! You use that line to mean something completely different. Completely just, it, different the third time. The but it makes so much was, sense, though. Oh yeah! Again, it, I got goosebumps again. <laughs> Wasn't love, but you know, it was somewhere in that neighborhood, and it fit with the youth. Uh huh. It mm-hmm. fit with everything, and yeah. boy, to use it three three times ambiguously three times was something beautiful because she went through the. The, you know, somewhere, I don't remember how old I was, and then, oh, somewhere in that neighborhood is our old house that we used to, and then to nail it at the end with the mm-hmm. tree, and oh, it felt so good, and it wasn't love, but it was somewhere in that neighborhood. End of song. Yeah. End of journey, end of road, end of song, end of memory, boom, it's great. So you have this narrative that was built on couplets that rhymed with hood yeah. with an ambiguous title that you were able to use two different ways, mm-hmm. literally and fictively. Mm-hmm. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It gives you something to go. It gives you signposts to write to and um, connect these things. You know, mm-hmm. switch them around. Maybe the second verse belongs on the first verse. Yeah. What is the best way to, to deliver the story, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, Very cool. I'll uh, give you one more title of ambiguity that I, that I gave out to... Uh, uh, students to freely use because it's in the it's you know they're ever it's not these aren't original titles it's not like uh you know um i can't love you anymore or um um, um the house that built me mm. you're not going to find that in a slang dictionary you're not going to you're not going to read that in a book necessarily 
it's that's a genius there. That's something that that's a switch of a word, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is another way to write country titles. Yeah. You know, the house that built me. That's just ooh. You know what I mean? That's that's, that's, cool. an, that's yeah. another interesting. That's ambiguous as well. Mm -hmm. Many mm -hmm. many things are are ambiguous. It's because mm -hmm. it's hard to really define something using terms in English speak at some point, especially emotional things. It's really not quite literal enough, you know, but, um, um, I, I wrote a song and I, and, and I threw this out to everybody to use, uh, how, um, I can't love you anymore. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the ambiguity of that? I can't love you anymore. I can't love you anymore. Just like you're fed up with someone and it's the end of your patience and you just want to leave. That's the yeah. first and most common treatment. And that yeah. needs to be written in this song. Yeah. Now, if, it, if, if that was the only, if that was the only version that you took mm -hmm. in the song, I can't live the whole song was, I can't love you anymore. It's over, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's over. I found somebody else and mm -hmm. here's your stuff. You know, I can't mm -hmm. love you anymore. Th that would be okay. It'd be more the pop domain really. Yeah. I mean, cause it's more of a, a one statement, more of a scene, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The ambiguity isn't there. And, uh, is that worth writing? Yeah, it might be mm -hmm. worth writing, but, but my craft, I want to be able to solve that and make it a little bit more interesting. And so mm -hmm. I would look at that first as an ambiguous title that I could do something else with. Mm -hmm. And the, the other ambiguity is I can't love you any more than I have. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've searched my broken heart and that's all there is. I surrendered mm -hmm. heart and soul. I can't love you anymore. Mm -hmm. I've, and it says both things. It's over and I've loved you more. I, I can't love you any more than I have. And it, that doesn't seem to be enough. Yeah, that's a total different spin on it. And another way but, is like if the person passes away, you know, it's not necessarily a breakup or anything, but can't love you anymore because you're gone. You know, that's, that's the third way. That well, definitely that's, a sad that's, song. that's really nice. I love that again ambiguity it's yeah. a third way of looking i can't mm -hmm. love you you know what that's really good i can you know i can i can smell your your gown mm -hmm. still and i can look at the pictures mm -hmm. of us but yeah. i can't love you anymore mm -hmm. that's actually that's deep that's actually a really sweet way to write that i would i would look at that i can mm. you know Again, I can do this and I can do that, but I can't. Again, that's the craft working. I'm thinking, mm. how can I use can against can't? Hmm. I can do these things and I can look at your picture. I can even dial your phone number, but you're not mm -hmm. going to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can almost deal with all of that mm -hmm. and move on with my life, but I can't love you anymore. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's so yeah. good. That's so yeah. good. Again, more, score, store. Yeah. Before, ah, oh, before. Yeah. Oh, before, and remember those things that we, the things we did before. But yeah. I can't love you anymore. Yeah. I can even, you know, um, oh, I can't close. I can try and close that door, but I can't love you anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing rhymes that are giving me these lines that will yeah. end up in the margin of the page. Yeah. Before I start anything. That's cool. That's really good, mm -hmm. Ryan. I love that. That, oh, that I've never you. heard. I've never in all these in all these years of, of, of bringing that title uh, to the forefront. I've never heard that side of it. And I love that. Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> did it. It becomes fun. It becomes it becomes fun. It's less yeah. and becomes objective. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's not about how I'm. Oh, you know, I can't. But if but if you did it right, people will. I've had people come up and ask me. For instance, I can't love you anymore. If that, if I played that song written that way, you just said I'd have people maybe come up and ask me occasionally, "Did you lose somebody?" Hmm. You know, because I. But more often they say, "You know, that song reminded me of, of yeah. you know, my cousin that I lost when I was, mm. or my first wife was." You know, it's their song. Mm. And that's the goal, that's, really. That's the goal because you yeah. know it sound it is subjective because artists, writers, we bring emotion into what we're doing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't have to have happened to us. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't have to have lost a loved one, uh, a wife or a girlfriend or, or somebody I love, to write. I can't love you anymore, and it sound completely convincing. Mm -hmm. The craft will do that. The words will do that. The mm -hmm. melody will do that. The chord changes will do that. Every choice you make is in service of that emotion that you've decided you're going to write. And if you do it right, it's going to sound like you lived it. But the point is, it's not you. It's them. It's mm -hmm. for them. 
yeah. and that's 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 my favorite the public writer rather than the the private writer you know and and, so and you don't lose yeah. anything in it you don't lose yourself you don't lose your originality you don't lose i mean you know um it's more of a universal goal mm -hmm. yeah i can't I love you anymore. i think that's every songwriter's goal to have someone say like your song is my song you know or like we danced at our wedding to this song where they or really that song, or that song saved my life mm. i've gotten that from a song that I wrote with Daryl Worley called Second Wind. That was mm -hmm. a big hit on country radio about 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I, that was an, I, I have had that happen two or three, maybe three times with that, with that song, Second Wind. Yeah, but one amazing. in particular, this girl was, this, this uh, girl was uh, living in, in the middle of Idaho or something. And, mm -hmm. and uh, she, she saw me at a, she met me at a, a, a songwriting works, a convention in Mississippi, so, Mississippi Songwriters Festival actually. She came up to me and and she said, "You know that song, your song saved my life." And I, wow, how? And she's telling me she's back home in Idaho, uh, in an abusive relationship, her mm -hmm. and her young daughter, mm -hmm. and she's fearing for her life. And she's washing dishes, and on her little uh, clock radio comes on comes Second Wind, mm -hmm. and she said it spoke to me, and it said, "Get your stuff mm -hmm. and go south to catch your second wind," because the song is about going you know in the ocean yeah. it has that ocean check it out it's a beautiful song daryl Worley, second wind it's mm. beautiful mm -hmm. and she said i got in my car and i made a clean break put the mm. daughter in the back and i got on i-65 eventually and headed south and 65 ends ends i-65 ends you go left to florida and right to mississippi uh -huh. she said i took a right and i got off at the first exit which was ocean springs which is where the festival was. And she said, I've been here for 15 years, and that's my new husband over there. He's a fireman, and we've got two other sons, and that song saved my life. Wow. And uh, <laughs> she said, it spoke to me to get your stuff and get out of there and get your second win. And if that wasn't moving enough, another I played it that night for her outside at this concert, and, and this other person came up to me, and she said, you know, I was standing in the bathroom line next to the girl that – you sang that song for and i turned to her and i asked her is that your husband and she she looked at me and she said no but that's the most important man of my life wow. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> i mean i just lost it i was crying in front of a stranger you know <laughs> and it's like she goes no but that's the most important man in my life wow wow and it, all because of a song that was written from a title it mm. wasn't oh i've lost Oh, it was an abusive relationship. Let me write this. I need no second wind. I read it somewhere. I don't remember. And I thought, boy, and it's an ambiguous title. Yeah. I'm going to catch my second wind, and it's written on the shore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wind is coming in, and the second wind with the. I mean, we used a whole bunch of boat images, and oh, it was beautiful. Yeah. But wrote it ambiguous, ambiguously. Thought what rhymed with wind. Wrote it backwards from those couplets, uh, you know, and it ended up being an emotional work of art that mm -hmm. turned to, to be both subjective and objective and universal. And and I guess it probably saved somebody's, at least two people's lives that wow. I know about. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, all, all starting from a title and a hook book, you know, so it's important work. <laughs> <laughs> saving lives saving over lives. here. <laughs> yeah, we're saving lives around here. Come on. That's amazing. Well, that's all I have to yeah. say about titles. We can. Uh, there's so many, many other things to talk about, but but I and I got you know a, a little far afield on some other things that I thought maybe helped. You know, oh, from yeah, the co-writing. Yeah. You know, why even start with a title? Well, again, to because you're bringing something in in a hook book because you're not going to waste somebody's time and blah blah mm -hmm. and ten to two and it becomes a job and. Best yeah. job in the world, and then backwards from the writing the title with a couplet that perfectly rhymes, and all mm -hmm. that stuff is important in the craft, in Definitely. crafting something. And there's other ways, obviously, that we'll talk about in other um, episodes about other approaches. Totally. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll uh, mm -hmm. make sure we talk about those because this is, isn't the only way. It's probably the most economical way to mm -hmm. write when you have a title mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. with, even more so than an idea, because now you're going, okay, what's the name of the and you know some songs uh suffer by not having a real important a real uh title mm -hmm. it's more of an yeah. idea that's fleshed out and you think you're scratching your head afterwards going well i like it but what's it called is that yeah. important well if i want to call the radio station it is 
<laughs> if I want to order it, if I want to hear it on Spotify, if I want to download it on uh, wherever, yeah, yeah, I think it's kind of important. It separates a song lyric from a menu, <laughs> you know, or a park ticket. It is a yeah. thing. Song yeah. lyrics have titles. I mean, you know, yeah. and there are examples yeah. of titles that weren't as important uh, as maybe uh, other other titles, but 99.9 of the songs have titles. And mm. to me, that's the place to start most of the time. Yeah, and it saves yeah, you from just like grabbing a random lyric and making that the title. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it, it, if you're a fan of craft, mm -hmm. you know, um, which is my method, it's what I love to do. And I think the listener knows when they're hearing it, if, if they're in the in the hands of somebody with a, with a, that, that has really crafted something that they mm -hmm. can trust. It's mm -hmm. like being in, it's like being in a really good car. It's like being a BMW 740 that I had for a while. Wow. You know, ooh, somebody thought about this thing. <laughs> Same way I feel in a very well-crafted song. I feel like this, this is, there's been some spit and polish in this sucker. Mm -hmm. And everything was, everything is worth it. Everything belongs in there. There's nothing yeah. wasted. And it's that's what I strive nice. for. Yeah. In whatever genre, you know. Yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, this was really amazing information. I don't know how many, you know, of you guys out there write from the title, but that's something that I'm definitely going to do more because the way that you put it, you know, you're crafting, you're writing a song like a chess player, you know, you're being very intentional about, um, you know, seeing through to the end product, and I love that. And so I think those are all great uh, tips and strategies that, you know, are really going to help elevate my songwriting. Hope it elevates your songwriting too. And yeah, I think with that, like, thanks so much, Steve. Again, so if you want uh, to learn more about the way that Steve writes his songs, he has a course out called Song Assembly at songassembly.co. That's the website. Uh, so definitely check that out because it's amazing. I went through the course, uh, all three modules of it. I, uh, you know, I binged it over a weekend. I tell this all the time. When I was sick with a cold, yeah. I just went through all the lessons and it was well worth it <laughs> thank you ron i love this man i appreciate what you're doing and uh yeah. i hope eyeballs are going in your way and my way and we're helping people absolutely yeah all right i think uh with that we are good on this video if you guys still watch and see ya, i don't know if i'm going to cut that off Who knows? all right yeah goodbye <laughs> 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 that's it <laughs>